Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Magic Wands tool in Adobe Illustrator. The Magic Wands tool is one of four selection tools that Illustrator has, but the unique thing about this tool is you can use it to click on an object on the artboard, and Illustrator not only selects that object, but any other objects that have the same properties, and that can be a huge time saver depending on what you're working on. So we'll look at how the tool works and how you can customize it, and then I'll give you a couple of examples how I personally use the Magic Wand tool to speed up the workflow in my projects. First, let's find where the tool is located, and we find it on the left toolbar as long as you've chosen the advanced setting. If you're not seeing the Magic Wand Tools icon, then come up to Window, down to Toolbars, and in the Flyout menu, click on advanced. Now the other thing that you can do is use the keyboard shortcut Y. With the Magic Wand tool active, I'm going to press the return key on my keyboard to open the Magic Wand panel. I can also access that by double clicking on the Magic Wand tools icon. These five properties that are on the Magic Wand panel are what we use to customize the Magic Wand tool, and we're going to go over each one of these so you'll understand how they work. Now, if you're not seeing all five of these properties listed, come up to the top right corner and click on this little icon, and the option you'd click on is Show Stroke Options or Show Transparency Options. But I have all five of mine, so I don't have to worry about that. Now, the Magic Wand tool is designed to work with vector graphics, and that includes objects and strokes and paths. If you want it to work with text or with pattern and art brushes, you'll have to first convert those to a different format, and I'll show you how to do that in this video. But I do want to speak to those of you who are Photoshop users and just let you know that the Magic Wand tool in Illustrator is not going to work with photographs. Now let's move up and take a closer look at the Magic Wand panel. The default setting has fill color checked, and that means when I click on an object on the artboard with the Magic Wand tool, Illustrator is going to be looking for all of the other objects that have the same fill color, except in this instance, the tolerance level is set to 20 pixels. So Illustrator is told, look for all the objects that are within a 20 pixel range of the object I've clicked on. So if I want the exact same color, I've got to change this tolerance level to zero pixels. Then when I click on an object on the artboard, Illustrator is only going to be looking for objects that have the exact same fill color. Now these other two objects here may look different. They're actually the same color, they just have a different opacity. So we have these objects selected but Illustrator didn't select these green strokes, and that's because even though they're green, they don't have a green fill color. But Illustrator didn't select our text, and it does have a green fill and no stroke. Well, the reason is the Magic Wand tool doesn't work with text unless it's been converted to outlines. And if you've never used the Create Outlines function before, this terminology is a little misleading. We're not really adding outlines to the text. We don't change its appearance at all. We're merely converting the letters to paths that Illustrator will look at, and if they have the right fill color, they're going to be selected. The one thing you need to know is that once you convert your text to an outline, it's no longer Longer editable. So make sure that your words are spelled correctly because if you have to make a change, you're going to have to delete them and start all over. Now let me show you how easy it is to convert your text. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. I'm going to hover over the text and you can see this little line underneath it, which indicates it's not been converted yet, so it's still editable. But if I click here and then come over to the properties panel and scroll down to the bottom and click on create outlines, the line underneath the text is gone, and we have anchors around each of these letters, and Illustrator is now going to recognize them as objects. So I'll click on the artboard to deselect the letters, then I'll get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y, and click on the green rectangle. And this time, Illustrator selects the objects here, and also my converted text. 
but we have a similar issue with the pattern in art brushes because Illustrator isn't selecting the green on these at all. I'm going to click on the artboard to deselect all the other objects and I'll show you what's going on. First of all, I use pattern and art brushes all the time, so I really need the magic wand tool to work with these. When I click on a green object, I need for Illustrator to pull out any green that happens to be in one of these brushes. But when you and I see the green and the pink here, Illustrator sees something completely different. Let me get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll show you how pattern brush is made. I have a black one point stroke here. I'll come to the brushes panel and click on this pattern brush and Illustrator applies the design to the stroke. But let's come back to the properties panel and see what the properties of this pattern brush actually are. We have no fill color, no pink, no green. Illustrator only sees a one point black stroke. So we're going to have to convert these designs so Illustrator will recognize the color. Now I'm going to select all three of the brushes and come up to object and I can either click on expand appearance or come down to path and click on outline stroke. Either way, I'm going to get this same result. The stroke that was running through the middle of the pattern and art brushes is gone. And now I have anchors around each one of the individual colored items. And Illustrator is going to recognize them as objects. So when I get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y, this time as I click on this green rectangle, Illustrator selects the objects, the converted text, and the green filled objects in my converted pattern and art brushes. So that's what you have to do if you want the magic wand tool to work with your pattern and art brushes. All right, let's come up and uncheck fill color and check stroke color. Now stroke color works along the same principle as fill color. With a tolerance value of zero, I can come down and click on this orange stroke and Illustrator selects both of the orange strokes plus these two blue stars, which have an orange stroke around them. I'm gonna deselect these objects and that won't change even if I click on an object that has a fill color because Illustrator is only looking for the stroke color. Now I'm not limited to checking just one of these properties. I can leave stroke color checked and also check fill color. I'm going to leave the tolerance level set to zero here and I'll come back and click on my orange stroke. This time Illustrator only selects the orange strokes rather than selecting these blue stars that have an orange stroke because the property of the object which I clicked on does not have a fill color. Now I can change this by clicking on this object that has a fill color and the orange stroke. Now I end up with these three blue stars selected and Illustrator is leaving out these two orange strokes. Well, I expected the two blue stars with orange strokes, but you might be surprised to see that Illustrator also selected the blue star that had no stroke. Now I wish Illustrator didn't do this. When I have fill color and stroke color checked, that's what I want Illustrator to look for. The problem is that when you have an object that matches the fill color and has no stroke color, Illustrator is going to throw this in with the other selections because it doesn't have the wrong stroke color. Now I can add one more property and that will take care of things. I'm going to check stroke weight. Now I'm going to leave the tolerance level set to five points and click on this star again. And this time Illustrator is matching the fill color and the stroke color, and there has to be a stroke weight. I'm going to uncheck fill color and stroke color, and let's talk a little bit more about stroke weight. The tolerance level works on the same principle, even though it's measured in points. If I change the value to zero, when I click on an object that has a stroke on the artboard, Illustrator is only going to be looking for the other strokes that have exactly the same stroke weight. In this instance, my stroke is one point. We're not asking it to look for color, so all of the one point strokes have been selected. If I click on a different stroke, this one happens to have a five point stroke, then Illustrator looks for all of the five point strokes on the artboard, which include even these objects that have a five point stroke. 
I'm going to uncheck the stroke weight, come back to fill color, and add opacity. Now the opacity is measuring the percentage of transparency that an object has. These two lighter green objects are a 50% opacity, and so if I click on them with opacity checked, Illustrator is going to select just those two items, even though they're the exact same green color as all the other green on the artboard. If I come back and click on this 100% rectangle, then Illustrator leaves the two lighter ones out, but selects the other greens. If I change the tolerance level to, let's say, 52%, and I click on this object, then we end up having all of the green objects selected. Well, let's uncheck Opacity and look at Blending Mode. Now, Blending Mode is our only option here that doesn't have a tolerance level, and that's because you either add a Blending Mode or you don't. And that's a whole other tutorial, but if you're working with Blending Modes and you have this checked, the Magic Wand tool will search out and match up the Blending Modes. I'm going to click on the artboard to deselect all of the objects. I'll uncheck Blending Mode. And I want to show you a fast way to select multiple colors with the Magic Wand tool without ever messing with the tolerance. First, I'm going to select my green rectangle, and then I'm going to hold down the Shift key. When I do, you can see the little plus sign appear underneath my Magic Wand tool, which means I can now add another color to the selection. So I'll come over and click on the orange rectangle. Now Illustrator has added these orange objects to the green selection. Then if I change my mind, all I have to do is press the Option key down, and now you see a minus sign underneath the Magic Wand tool. Well, all I have to do is come over and click on the orange rectangle again, and all of the orange objects have been deselected. Now you can have as many of these different properties checked at the same time as you want, but if you happen to uncheck all of them, then when you use the Magic Wand tool to click on an object, the only thing Illustrator is going to select is that particular object. You have to have at least one property checked on the Magic Wand panel in order for the Magic Wand tool to work. Now there's one more important option on the Magic Wand panel that I want to show you. To do that, I'm going to move to another document, and we're going to look at one of my projects. This is one of my seamless pattern swatches. And by the way, if you've never tried making one of these before, they're really fun to make and great to use. So I'm going to leave a link to one of my most popular tutorials at the end of this video, and you can check them out for yourself. I love to make seamless pattern swatches, and once I create the design, then I like to make copies and recolor them so I have a lot of different choices. And through the process, the one important thing to me is that I keep my original colors. But that can get a little tricky because we've learned that when we click on an object on the artboard, Illustrator selects all of the objects on the artboard, whether they're on the copy or on the original. So when I get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, and I click on a different color, Illustrator changes the copy and the original, which is definitely not what I want. So I'm going to undo the move, keyboard shortcut Command Z. But there is a way to set up your project so this doesn't happen, and that's with the use of layers. Now, I use layers all the time because they help me to keep my work organized. I'm going to move over to the Layers panel and show you what it looks like. Now, if you'd like more information about using layers, I'll leave a link to a tutorial at the end of this video. But for now, notice that I have my original design on a layer and the new design on a layer. To create new layers, you come down to the bottom of the layers panel and click on the little icon that is a square with a plus sign in it. When I click here, you can see layer 9 has appeared, and because it's highlighted, it's active. So if I get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I drag out an object on the artboard, Illustrator is going to place it in the active layer. Now, I don't need this object, so I'm going to press the delete key, and then I'm going to come down to the trash can and delete layer 9. Now that you've seen this, we're going to find out what that other option was on the magic wand panel. We're going to click on the little icon in the top right corner, and we have this flyout menu where Use All Layers is checked. So unless you uncheck this, 
when you click on an object on the artboard with the magic wand tool, Illustrator is going to select all the objects on the artboard regardless of what layer they're on. Well, we only want Illustrator to work on this new design layer, so I'm going to uncheck Use All Layers. Now, when I get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y, and I click on the green fill color, Illustrator is only looking for the fill color in the new design layer. Nothing on the original design has been selected. So I can get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I, click on the blue swatch, and that changes all of the green on the copy. Now I'll get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y, and I'll click on this light pink, and I want to add the dark pink. Remember, you hold down the shift key and get that little plus sign, then I'll select these darker pink objects and I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I and click on the red swatch, then get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y. This time I'll select the cream color and it looks like I've gotten more than that cream color. I can check that by coming over to the left toolbar. Sure enough, I've selected the black fill, which isn't what I wanted. So I'll click on the artboard to deselect that and come back and try to get the cream color again. This time when we look over here, we have the cream color. So Illustrator selects what I want. Incidentally, if you have a question mark here instead of a color, that means you've selected more than one color and you can just click on the artboard like I did and deselect the items and come back and check them again. Well we have the cream color selected so I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I and click on the white swatch. Then I'll get the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y and click on the black background which I want now and you can see that I have it. I'll get the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I and click on the gold swatch. Then I'm going to get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut shortcut V and click on the artboard to deselect the background and we're left with the same design but in an entirely different color palette. Now I'll show you one more example of how using the magic wand tool can speed up your process. I'll hide the swatches layers and unhide these logo layers. I have each one of my logos on a separate layer so that I can recolor them one at a time without bothering the other layers or messing with those colors. And I'm not going to speed this up. I'm going to go back and forth between the magic wand tool, keyboard shortcut Y, and the eyedropper tool, keyboard shortcut I. I just want you to see how fast this process really can be. The longest thing you may find is in looking for the colors that you want to use. But once you've selected those and you have your logos on your layers, it's just a matter of seconds and your logos have completely been recolored. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and not only learned something about the magic wand tool, but that you've gotten some ideas from my examples of how you can use the magic wand tool to speed up your own workflow. I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.